70 years ago tonight, Northwest Orient Flight 2501 took off from New York on its way to Minneapolis. The flight path took it over southwest Michigan between Benton Harbor and South Haven and then across the lake. Around midnight, the plane encountered a severe storm and mysteriously crashed. 58 lives were lost. A new account combined with some hopeful help from nature may lead a group of explorers to finally find the wreckage. 13 on your side's Brent Ashcroft has this update in our Michigan life. The one certainty is the wreckage is out there. The one question for the past seven decades has been where? A group of explorers believes it is closing in thanks to an old newspaper article and an assist from the National Weather Service. She can be fast, furious, frightening. There were miscommunications between the Northwest radio operator and the pilot. Her name, Mother Nature. June storms were quite prevalent, uh, still are. Nothing controls her except. There's still people alive that knew the victims of this. Her. They still want answers. Explorer Valerie Van Heest has found many. This was a weather related incident. What she hasn't found. 16 years that I've been working on this project to try to learn about the accident and discover the remains. Is a piece of the plane. That final bit of closure. Since weather caused the crash. We did some work with the National Weather Service in Grand Rapids. Maybe weather. We were able to do something called a hindcast. Solves the mystery. And this gave us an opportunity to have a somewhat better idea of what those storms may have looked like, how they may have evolved, how fast they would have moved. An animated visual, helpful. Valerie needed more. My expertise is in what's called geophysical fluid dynamics. David Schwab. Predict what happened in the past. Creates hindcasting studies for modern day search and recovery on the Great Lakes. I ran some computer simulations then of what the currents would be like in the lake during that few days after the, the plane went down. We tried to find the pieces of debris whose trajectory took them closest to the places and times when debris was sighted. Based on the uh, correlation of the paths of these pieces of debris with the locations and times where actual debris was found, we can take the pieces of debris that came closest and look where they started. Then came. I had read the articles, but not this one. New details. It had a story of a Commander Helm who had seen the plane that night. He was quoted saying. I looked out over the lake. I noticed a plane was heading east and that its landing signals were flashing. The lights kept coming closer to my house. Heading east. Not only did he see the plane that night, but he saw it turn around and come back to shore. A stunning development. When it was within his eyesight, he saw an explosion. Helm's account, the Weather Service hindcasting, and David Schwab's debris simulation. They're all coalescing, and they're all pointing us to one spot on Lake Michigan, where this plane probably crashed. Surprisingly, it was in an area we had not yet searched. Nothing controls Mother Nature except Mother Nature. But thanks to technology turning back time. It's all based on weather. Maybe she can actually help discover what she took. Now we're down to a very small search area, and we're covering that this year. 70 years ago. We've got another shot at finding this. Brent Ashcroft reporting. When lake conditions allowed, Valerie and her group, the Michigan Shipwreck Research Association, have been out a few times this year scanning the unsearched area. We have more about the Flight 2501 disaster on our website, 13onyourside.com.